still at the black grass like all the things are winding down so I'm now at the point where I'm having to wait for all the birds to leave so that I can get out the hide and go home but I thought while I'm waiting I want to talk to you a bit about um, black grouse photography I recently put out a video on the birds themselves and this is a follow-up on how to actually get images yourself and I'm sorry but it's going to take a while so the first thing you need to do is to find them now I'll give you a few hints but not too many on that because I don't want hundreds of people trying to find them but you're basically looking for the point at which the fields turn into moorland and where there's some riparian woodland some sort of woods along the trees um, so trees along rivers and streams where they feed in the winter once you've done that and you manage to find a lek and the way to find it is to spend time driving and walking these sorts of areas but don't do this at this time of the year in sort of March, April, May do it in the autumn because you want to find the birds and have everything ready for the next spring although it doesn't have to be spring these birds will be lecking certainly from October onwards although early on in the season it becomes more dependent on the weather they don't really like it when it's windy I think basically they can hear and see birds of prey less I also think that birds of prey have got a quicker um, route in, they can swoop in faster. So if it's windy they may well not turn up, which is what happened to me on the 1st of January, I thought. As Hogmanay in Scotland was cancelled, I would spend my morning, first of the year, with a grouse. And of course it was a windy day so they never turned up and I didn't see one. So instead of black grouse being my first bird of the year, it was the... Uh, crow. <laughs> Not quite so exciting. Once you've found a lek, you then have probably the most difficult job to do, which is to build up trust. Not in the grouse, in the owners of the land and the managers of the land, the local gamekeepers, because most of these sites to photograph them, yeah there's some way you can photograph from the road, mostly you're photographing from a hide so you can get a low enough angle and be in the right position. And to do that, you need to introduce the hide over a period of time. And you're not going to be introducing the hide. You're not going to be introducing the hide and leaving it out without permission. Also, some of the places I've photographed have basically been in just about in people's gardens. Um, they do live quite low down in places. So if you're going to be going and photographing from somebody's garden, you better ask them permission first. This site here is a good site, but I've got to come through two locked gates and you, know, you need the key. Um, so you have to build up a relationship with the local landowners, farmers, people who can give you permission. Don't just be an idiot and come in here. It can take time, but once you've done this, you tend to find that they talk to each other. So other lex sites that I go to now, or other bird watching sites, quite often they know me when I arrive. They know, oh, you're in here, aren't you? And um, I'm fortunate that that's, I'm here and hey, can I help you? You know, hmm, come into a photograph on my hide. Oh, I'm then quite often an excited story about something new that they've seen. It could easily be, you're here and hey, get lost. <laughs> you're not coming anywhere near here. Once you've done that, you need to start watching the site and work out exactly where the hide should be. Now, this site's very good because you can come along with the car and watch from a distance 
and gradually mark out where you want to put the hide. I use the What Three Word app to give me the exact location. And there's a bit of action going on now. And the What Three Word app so that I can find the place in the dark in the future. You then need to introduce the hide at a distance and gradually work it in um, to the point where you want it to be. Once you've done this, you um, once you've done this, you can take the hide away and bring it back, and they'll sort of be used to it. Keep warming the hide, and a couple of tips. One is, this is water. It might not always be water. You need um, somewhere to go, because you can't get out. You're stuck here until the lake's over. The longest I've gone in the hide is 24 hours in Sweden photographing cranes. 24 hours in a 1 meter by 1 meter by 2 meter box. Just me, the cranes out the window, and a bucket. So once you've got the hide in place, you need to come in and get into the hide. The easiest thing to do is to get in the night before and sleep in it. It's much easier than much easier than um, trying to get here early in the morning before them. Because if you're late, you're rushing everything. And you don't want to disturb the birds. That's a key thing. When you start taking photos, you'll find that it's pretty dark because the birds get in here well before dawn and a lot of the action happens well before dawn so you're pushing your ISO pretty high. And there's always lots of action going on. So the first time you'll come, you'll be taking a lot of photos. Um, many of them will end up in the bin the recycled bin but you'll end up getting a few and then it's a case of trying to improve on it and the particular thing that I'm always trying to do is get images of the females because when they appear all hell breaks loose and they're beautiful birds um, they're annoying because twice I've seen them do this strange behaviour where the females start displaying and pumping themselves up and showing their petticoat like the, the white petticoat the males have and both times I've completely messed it up. I'm just recording what I'm seeing now. So. Can I put up on the screen what I'm seeing right at this moment? So yeah, so both times something's gone wrong, so this is an image I want to get. The other thing you want to do is to get the fights. Um, they can be spectacular. Earlier on in the year they're just messing about. When it gets later into the year they can tear chunks out of each other. The worst I've seen is one day and it had been beautiful. It had been really nice sort of spring weather. And these terrible conditions started. It was blowing a gale, major blizzard, and they were tearing strips out of each other. This is a bit of video, and if you look closely, one of them's got quite a bit of flesh hanging out in a blizzard in really cold conditions. It was, it was awful, really, because um, they do mean it at times. The other Thing you're trying to do really is get the the action shots the the fight shots and there's two ways you can do this at the start you tend to go quite wide and hope to get sort of some action once you've got a lot of those the next thing to do is to try and move in close and get some really close action and the r6 has been great for this because it's got the 20 frames per second and you can you know, you're not going to really get 20 frames per second, but you can push the frame rate up really high. And then it's just a case of keep on firing, and hopefully you'll get some images. These are some of my favourites.
white shots are difficult. Um, I've had probably my best ever one this morning. I'll put it up now. I don't know if it's sharp enough. Um, again, they do these like little flutter flights where it's like a display flight, but they tend to do them in the dark. Once the sun comes up, <laughs> once just done one. <laughs> once the sun comes up, generally they stop. Uh, they're all doing them now. Irritating little bit. Um, you can probably hear that behind me. <sighs> Vlogging, why I do it. Anyway, the tend to them in the dark, and, you, and it doesn't really work very well from a hide because you can't track it. You're on a tripod, you're in a confined space. It's quite difficult to track the flights, but I did get these ones this morning. I don't think the shutter speed was fast enough. Um, but it's certainly enjoyable, enjoyable having a go. So here's a few of the, the best sort of fight shots I've got and also some of the 4K video. The difficult thing also with the fight, with the fights, is what almost always happens is they come together, they sort of and then they pretend that they're not interested and they sort of wander off and then they run in and actually do the fighting and they zigzag backwards and forwards um, they're trying to get into the right position it's quite good if they're actually zigzagging backwards and forwards sort of away and towards you um, but that becomes difficult and the eye control focusing on the R6 is good for that I say that allowing me to get these images the other thing to say is don't just photograph legs. 99.9% .9 of all black grouse photos are taken at legs. And I actually enjoy taking photos of them in the winter, up in the trees. Um, I've got a couple of good sites. This is a, a few of the males up in the trees feeding. And this is one that I took this winter that I'm really pleased with. And they're happily feeding away. could see them at this time of year, you tend to see more of the males, I've seen a couple of males in a tree further on but they have been slightly awkward grouse is tiny in the frame but it, it sort of shows the habitat, shows where they are the fabulous birds keep an eye on the histogram they're black and white and once the sun starts hitting that tail it becomes quite tricky also when the sun hits them the saturation, the colours on them is fantastic they are so bright um, it's one of the few birds where if the sun's on it you do consider reducing the saturation particularly on the the waffle the eyebrow because it just looks so strong just it looks false i tend to leave it but you are tempted just to tone it down because it is so strong so other tips for the hide i'll show you one of the other tips so I'm in a good sleeping bag, but even then, your feet get cold. Woolly slippers, really useful. Pillow, I tend to use a low pro camera bag. Um, a bit knobbly, but it does the job. Because the hides don't have a ground sheet, you need to bring your own tarp or something. And I use a, an inflatable um, camp bed, which you can get for about 30 40 pounds and packed down to about the same size as a small bottle of juice so like half a kilo and it keeps you warm and keeps you comfortable um so yeah i'm gonna leave you with a, a few shots of these magnificent wonderful mad birds and as i say if you haven't watched it watch my first black grouse video because 
that everything said about grouse is generally rubbish. <laughs> they um, they don't behave as they're supposed to. I think too much of the knowledge of grouse that's told is taken from people stuck in hides rather than travelling around because they don't behave as they're supposed to. Um, but what's the first video for that? After you've liked and subscribed to this one. I want to leave you with that sound. I'm just going to be quiet now. Thank you for watching. Well, it's now nine o'clock in the morning and the grouse are still here. They're just lazily wandering around, feeding. Every once in a while they come in and have a, a bit of a fight, but then they wander off and feed and preen and the light's completely gone for photography. Um, I could really do to use the loo. I don't really want to use the bottle. And I have a Zoom meeting in about an hour's time. But I'm stuck because I don't want them to associate this hide with me. So I need to wait until they leave. Still, it's been a fabulous night. <laughs> the other thing is, um, when I got in the tent, it was minus four, and hence the really big warm down jacket. Um, my record for sleeping in this down jacket and this sleeping bag is minus 16 so it is really nice and warm but now the sun's out there's not a cloud in the sky which is why I'm not taking photos because it is just too harsh and too flat a light is not good at all now um, uh, guess I just have to hang on and slowly cook in this ever warming tent Ah, well, please like and subscribe. Go away.